What is going on everybody? I'm back making another video and in today's video I want to be talking about the best blue hive build in the game as you know I recently switched to blue hive and I promised you guys a blue hive build But I also wanted to look around and talk to some other top pros and get their opinions on what exactly is the best Combination of bees in your hive for making the most so it actually kind of depends on what you're trying to do Are you trying to macro mainly or are you trying to macro and boost and it actually can make a difference which bees you put in your hive and how much you make depending on exactly what you're trying to do so for me personally this is the hive that I'm running I'll show you guys my hive and why I have everything and then I'll talk about some other top pros like the white hive king who recently switched to blue and also people like SD middens she's a really trusted and well-known bee swarm youtuber she has been for a long time and she also came out with a best blue hive build and I just want to talk about some small differences in the hives between like SD middens and and one of the top pros. Now, I'm not saying SD Midden's hive is bad or anything, but there are some differences that top pros are making in their hives that you don't really see anywhere else. So first, we'll just talk about my hive, and then we'll get into other people's, kind of try to formulate an opinion on what is best. So I have a basic bee, a bumblebee, a cool bee, a looker bee, a stubborn bee. These are pretty much like the bees that you have to have for a blue hive, and the opinion stuff kind of comes down to the mythics. Like, should you have more vector bees? in your hive makes it better for boosting should you have more buoyant bees which gives you more macroing and about the same for boosting i'll show you guys exactly what i mean whenever i am looking over the white hive king's hive and sd midden's hive but these are pretty much the basic bees that you want to have you want to have basic bumble cool looker stubborn bubble bucko commander frosty baby diamond a few musics a ninja a shy bee and then this down here is where it gets a little bit interesting i have 10 buoyant bees 10 tadpoles and three vectors vectors. I could have gotten rid of all my vectors and just had like 13 buoyant bees and apparently that makes more macroing. So I actually want to, now that you guys have seen everything that I have, the only, um, the only event bee I don't have is crimson. You could also get rid of puppy if you're not leveling up bees. You could also get rid of vicious if you don't really need vicious at the moment. I usually replace my vicious for something so that's why my vicious has been non-gifted for a long time. Pretty much only used for attack so whenever you want to boost or replace him with something better you can. But yeah these these are all the bees that I have for a blue hive. Now we're going to kind of talk about other top players' hives and why their hives is a little bit different. So I talked to DJ the Go, also known as the White Hive King. He's one of the best players in the game. The Blue Hive King is actually third right now, but as you can see, the White Hive King is 13th. He's been playing for a long time. He knows a lot about the game and pretty much how to get good at the game. So I'll actually show you our conversation. I was talking to the White Hive King the other day whenever I was trying to switch hives and there's a lot of amulets that you actually have to have that you wouldn't think for blue hive like for example the moon amulet what you're going to want is honey per pollen you're not going to want instant conversion you're not going to want pollen per scent you want honey per pollen on your moon amulet for a blue hive which a lot of people don't really know so i asked to see his hive he actually has 15 buoyants and he runs zero vectors because it says it makes more when you're macroing and it's about the same time from boosting so here is the white hive king's hive clearly his hive is a lot higher level than mine. He's a really end game player. He's top 13 all time in the world. So this is what he says that you should run. He actually has 11 tadpole bees, if I'm counting correctly, and 15 buoyants. So obviously he doesn't have a puppy bee. Oh, he actually does have a puppy bee, but obviously he doesn't have... Wait, he has a vicious bee too? How does he actually have room for all this stuff in his hive? I don't have enough room for 11 tadpoles and 15 buoyants. I'm running 10 of each. Well, one of the, one of the main things things is he doesn't have any vectors in his hive. I have some vectors in my hive and this is pretty much the main difference because if we go over to like SD Midden's hive, she made a best blue hive build a little while ago. She has five vectors in her hive, which she says is really good for boosting, especially if you have pop gummy. So it kind of depends on which Supreme Star amulet you have, if you want to have vectors in your hive or not. And it also just depends on kind of what works best for you. If you make more having some vectors in your hive instead of so many buoyants, if you run like 10 buoyants and five vectors instead of just like 15 buoyants then you might make more from boosting but then again the white hive king says he makes more when macroing from having more buoyants and about the same from boosting so pretty much you don't really need the vectors that much for boosting and you still make about the same but you make way more when you're macroing just having those extra buoyants so i also asked him to see some of his amulets so obviously on your ant amulet you're going to want to have pollen and blue pollen on it he hasn't even changed his uh 
ant amulet. He says that he's kind of lazy on his stick amulet right now too, and he just has pollen percentage, but you want to get blue pollen on both of these. So there's a lot of small variations you can have with your hive. It's kind of just whatever works best for you, depending on your amulets, your stats. If you make more from running some vectors, then run some vectors. If you think you'll make more just having no vectors and getting extra buoyant bees in your hive, then do that. All I'm trying to say is there's differing opinions on what the best blue hive build is. So I just want to get all that information out to you guys so you can kind of formulate your own opinion on what exactly is best. On the Supreme Star Amulet, the only thing kind of wrong with mine is I have white pollen. Everything else you pretty much want, except you actually don't really want instant conversion. That's kind of seen as a wasted stat actually for blue hives, even though it's kind of the most important stat to have on a SSA for red and white hive. So you actually don't really want instant conversion. You want critical chance, bar, blue pollen, pollen, convert rate, stuff like that. So I got four out of the five things that I need if that white pollen was just bar. This would pretty much be almost a perfect blue amulet, except it's pop guiding. Um, that's not really the best for boosting, but it's still good for macroing. So let's just do a little bit of a playthrough. I haven't really just like playing the game on camera in a while. I'm usually just talking about stuff. So let's go and actually check how close I am to getting the Tide Popper. So I have 50 super smoothies. I do want to get the Tide Popper because of how overpowered blue is. I just have to finish saving up all my materials. So let's see what I actually need more of. I need quite a bit more swirled wax. I need 75 of that. And I also need more blue extract. I only have 1176. So that kind of sucked. Um, I have 46,000 blueberries though, because I've been macroing for a little while. So let's head over to the machine and let's try to craft some stuff to get blue po or the tide popper because getting the tide popper is another thing that you want for blue hive that'll definitely help you out a ton. That's of course, if you already have all the other stuff for blue, like the shoulder guards, the coconut backpack, gummy boots, the diamond mask. If you already have stuff like that, it's time to start saving for the tide popper. So let's get our auto clicker out and set it to really fast. And let's just craft a ton of blue extract. I need this blue extract to make the tide popper. So let's just make sure we barely have enough. I don't want to make way, way too much. Uh, let's just get a little bit over what we need, speed it up for some tickets. So we have enough blue extract now. And the only last thing we need is some swirled wax. Swirled wax is pretty hard to get. You need three of this hard wax. You need nine soft wax. You need six purple potions just to make a single swirled wax. So let's make three more swirled wax, even though it's really hard to make. Can't make any more hard wax. I'm out of bitter berries. Oh, wait, no, I'm not out of bitter berries. Why can't I make this? Oh, I'm out of soft wax. And then soft wax requires the honeysuckles, which are also pretty hard to get. I think I'm out of honeysuckles again. So that that's pretty much the bottleneck for me right now. It's just getting honeysuckles. So I might make a video on how to get those quick because I feel like the honeysuckles are pretty much like the bottleneck for everyone trying to make stuff. It just takes a long time to get honeysuckles and you need it for all these new waxes and turpentine. Like all these new waxes are so expensive just to make the soft wax. You need all that. And then hard wax needs a bunch of soft wax. Swirled wax needs a bunch of soft wax. Caustic wax needs a bunch of hard wax, which needs a bunch of soft wax. So it pretty much all comes down to these honeysuckles for like all the ingredients in these new in-game items. So I'll definitely make a video on how to get honeysuckles quick. I feel like that's one of the most important ingredients people are trying to get that's hard to get. But yeah, this is my progress towards Tide Popper. I, I still only have 31 Swirled Wax. I wish I had a lot more. Um, I've been saving up all kinds of stuff for a while. And since I just switched from White Hive to Blue Hive, I actually have to change what I'm saving. So I still have a bunch of my festive beans, a bunch of uh, my other stuff that I just been saving. And I just really want to get the Tide Popper or the new in-game items before I do super super, super big festive bean boost. I really hope that I can get the Tide Popper like before Beesmas ends so I can use these festive beans like on the last honey day or at least before Beesmas ends when I have all the extra boosters. But yeah, we'll see what happens. I just got to keep grinding and saving up my stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and enjoyed looking at my hive, SD Min's hive, the White Hive, King's hive, and kind of comparing them and looking at the small differences and what can make more or less. If you guys found this video useful, hit the like button, comment some more ideas for future videos down below, and subscribe if you have not already. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you all in the next one very soon. Peace out, everybody. Yo, why is Fortnite down at the bottom? I didn't even... How long has this been here? Has this Fortnite Tilted Towers crap been at the bottom of my screen the whole video? <laughs>